so you may be asking yourself, uh, why does this person here uh, talking, um, why is she qualified to teach anything about careers or resumes? Well, not too long ago, I actually sat down and I wrote down every job I've had since high school. So this does not include, include my high school employment because that's like another six jobs to add, including working in a fish cannery, which we won't go into that. But I literally had about 18 jobs. So I have been to probably 30 plus, 40 plus interviews in my life. Um, and I, um, even in some of these jobs, my job was to actually write resumes for people. So i um, been doing this a long time. Um, Granite Falls High School is my current job. I've been here like 12 years. It's the longest job I've ever had. 13 years, I think. My next job after this is a stand-up comic. Um, although when I say that to my students, they usually tell me just to keep my current job. So I don't know. That may or may not work out. Um, why a careers union? Why are we, why is this important for our kids? You know, I always like to start uh, a career unit by asking my kids to explain how to get a job to somebody who say was raised by primates in the Congo. Uh, and, you know, they're just coming into society. Um, what, what do you say to that person when that person says, I need a job? How do I get a job? Well, the first thing people say is do a resume. You need a resume. Well, well what's a resume? Well, it's a, it's a piece of paper and, and it, has, it has your experience on it and it has your skills and your education. Oh, okay. And you need to fill out a job application. Well, what does that look like? And you need to have a cover letter. Well, what is, what is a cover letter? So, you know, I think we kind of assume that our kids know a little bit about what a resume is and they know what a cover letter is and they may know what a job application is. But believe it or not, I truly believe that most of our kids have really no idea unless they have had to apply for a job, um, you know, at some point in high school. So I think it's really important that you kind of make the assumption that we're starting from scratch um, when teaching our kids. And then a career unit also needs to not just cover resumes, which we tend to just cover resumes. We also need to talk about how to find a job, how to apply for it, the resume and cover letter, of course, and then interviewing skills and thank yous and follow-ups, all of that stuff, all of those things are required to actually get a job. So if all we do is teach resumes, we're kind of cutting our students short. And I'm all about what is best for the kids. I'm all about what is going to make them successful when they leave high school, um, go to college, even if they don't go to college, what's going to make them successful when they're in their late 20s, when they're 40, you know, um, all of this stuff. I like to always tell my students that finding a job is a job itself and that you have to change your mindset about it. And the people who are most successful at job hunting um, have a lot of professionalism and organization. They take it very seriously. They're prepared on, at a moment's notice for a job interview. They have their job interview outfit all laid out. It's in the closet, ready to go. They spend several hours each day looking for a job and they research the companies. They actually are, are, are thoughtful and they have the right mindset um, for searching for a job. And then I think with kids today, it's really important to tell them not to put all their eggs in one basket. Because I think our students apply for a job, and I've seen this, and you probably have seen it too, they apply for a job and then they sit and they wait. And they wait. And they wait a week and two weeks and then three weeks. And then really what comes down is that they didn't get the job and now they've wasted three weeks where they've lost other potential job opportunities. So again, this is sort of changing the student mindset. Um, don't put all your eggs in your basket. I tell them to apply if they really need a job after high school, after college, three to four job application resumes a week, three to four. You will get one interview, potentially, maybe two out of those three or four applications. 
So now we're going to talk about where are the jobs? Where do we find jobs today for our students? Where should they be looking? Um, where sh uh, uh, what are some great resources to actually find jobs? Um, and Kylie's going to uh, take over here and talk about these different locations. And I'll jump in as needed. We're going to kind of make this conversational in style. So um, Kylie, take it away. Perfect. Sounds good. Thanks, Trudy. So uh, with the ever-changing world of technology, there's a lot of different outlets and facets that uh, that people in general can use to um, find jobs. So first and foremost, being online. I mean, there's so many different, you know, career builder, monster, work source, indeed, uh, LinkedIn. There's so many different resources. And I would say that in my profession, that's, that's the primary source of hiring right now. Everyone's online, um, just Trying to trying to network through all of those platforms. Um, I work really closely with uh, the WorkSource in Tacoma as well as the one in Seattle. I actually have uh, some data points to talk about later on. Um, but yeah, so this is where people I would say are primarily finding jobs. But that being said, how how else? How what other avenues are there? We need to educate our kids because online is so flooded right now. The job market's hot, and where's everyone going? Straight to online, and so it's um, and to all of these resources. So it's a little bit of a flooded market right now. Uh, so that's why it's it's great to, to just explore other avenues. So for example, job fairs, um, prior to COVID uh, job fairs, I, I would do quite a few and see a lot of turnout with candidates as well as employers. And it's a great just networking event to get you out there, get you talking to new, um, sorry, get candidates talking to new employers, just see what all is out there. Um, but again, with COVID being what it is, it's it, we've kind of had to take a little bit of a step back from those in-person job fairs. But I am seeing a little bit of a kick up in virtual job fairs. Um, and again, it's just knowing knowing what resources are out there. Um, there's also staffing and recruiting agencies, and that's what I work for. So as my mother had introduced me earlier, I work for a company called Aerotech and again, staffing and recruiting company. Uh, and so I actually work with businesses that are looking to find top talent in the area. Um, and then uh, my recruiting team works with talent to match them up with the best fit uh, employers that we're working with. So we really work through their goals, skills, and interests to make sure that we're matching them up with the right position. Um, it's some agencies run their business a little bit differently. Uh, they Some do actually ask for a, a piece of, of pay from the candidates or employees paycheck. Uh, my company does not do that. So just a heads up that they those companies are out there and do exist. So make sure that students are doing their research and asking on the front end if if they are um, uh, expected to pay some sort of a fee. Does this be anything? Yep. Um, yeah, great. So then, and then networking. I mean, networking at its finest. Like you're always, always on. Like Trudy said, any interaction you're having with someone, it's it's a networking opportunity. You know, you never know who you're gonna run into. And just getting students to be thinking in that mindset of, you know, hey, I'm running into someone at Fred Meyer. I might as well just be nice and polite to them. And who knows, it could start this conversation. And now I'm starting a job on Monday. You never know. So um, networking is is huge in not just my industry, but the hiring industry as a whole. Um, who you know can help you get your foot in the door, but uh, at the end of the day, it, it's you who's going to keep yourself there. So, um, and then I think Trudy was going to chat a little bit about the professional associations websites. 